What's up mga matibay? Here we are on our next example for the flexural analysis for concrete that is cracked. We actually presented an example on our previous video but it is a rectangle but now we will be dealing with the irregular shape so it's a new trick okay so how are we going to solve a problem if the beam is in its irregular shape whatever shape it is okay so how are we going to solve that so that will be our topic this time but before that i would just um, like to shout out for john michael salas siya po yung nasa itas, okay okay thank you so much po for the support john michael salas and all of the engineering students from the university of mindanao especially po yung mga civil engineering dyan na palaging nanonood po ng mga tutorials natin nakaabang po para sa ating reinforced concrete okay so thank you so much guys for your support and also po yung mga taga baganga okay mga bagangen nyo mga kababayan ko po thank you so much so let's proceed Okay, so this will be our example. Compute the bending stresses in the beam shown, so that is the figure. Okay, by using the transformed area method, of course, it is cracked, so we have to use the transformed area. Considering that N is equals to 8 and M is equals to 110 feet kips, okay? So, in solving the irregular shape, the process is just the same with the rectangle okay so our solution there is we have to locate the neutral axis this is quite a challenge for the irregular shapes because we don't know where is the neutral axis okay so we assume that the neutral axis is below the hole but it can also be that the neutral axis may be located on this portion here so we don't know so this is actually a trial and error problem so once we solve for the value of x considering that our neutral axis is somewhere on this area in this portion and if the value of our x is less than six meaning our assumption is wrong okay because this is already six and the value of x is less than six then maybe the neutral axis is somewhere here that is if our x is less than six but if sa it satisfies that x is greater than six then our assumption is correct okay so all of the regular shapes would have to be like this okay even if it's t shape sorry for the drawing okay if that is your t shape there you don't know if the neutral axis is somewhere here or maybe somewhere on this portion so you have to test the two okay so you have to assume that your neutral axis is here and then assume that your x is from your the assumed neutral axis to your top okay so that would be your x or this will be your x so you assume first that this is your x and then you assume also this one so whichever satisfied then that's the real that's the exact value of x so if the x or for example this is the the flange is 3 okay and then the value of your x is 2 then maybe our x is somewhere here but if it's really greater than 3 then your assumption is true or your assumption is correct okay so that is just how you solve for the neutral axis for the irregular beams this is quite a challenge okay so you have to assume so whichever is satisfied that is the correct answer okay i hope that is clear so in this example we assume that the neutral axis is below the hole so our solution there is 18 inches times the x multiplied by x over 2 again in solving the neutral axis we just have to take the moment to our assumed neutral axis but we are not again we're not involving forces so we just have to use the area and the center of that area to our neutral axis as our distance so this is our area 18 times the x so that is that one and then somewhere in the middle that is its center so that distance to the neutral axis is x over 2 that is where we get 18x times x over 2 and then we subtracted i'm sorry i'm sorry, I'm sorry. 
and then we subtracted this portion here that small square the small hole there so the area for that is 6 times 6 and then the center of that is somewhere here so the half of this is a 3 meaning that the distance to the neutral axis is x minus 3 okay so that is where we get x minus 3 and again the compression I'm sorry the compression should be equated with the tension so our tension here is for the steel so we have n which is 8 again this is nas and then our 5.0 that is our area of course nas and the distance from here to there is 23 inches minus x so that is how we solve for our neutral axis so that is uh, that is the procedure okay but we don't know yet if our assumption is correct or not so in solving that equation we get that the value of x is 9.32 inches and of course it is obvious that 9.32 is greater than 6 so meaning our assumption is correct but if ever that the value of x is less than 6 then our assumption is wrong so we have to solve again considering that our neutral axis is somewhere in the middle somewhere here if our condition does not satisfy the cave so I hope you get that how we solve our neutral axis so that is for the neutral axis it's very important for you to know that for our next step we just have to solve for the moment of inertia so in solving our moment of inertia our moment of inertia is equals to the one third times six times 9.32 inches cubed times two so where did we get that so we actually know that this is that our x is equals to 9.32 okay so our x is 9.32 and this portion here and that portion here so we just add the 2 okay so that is why we multiplied it by 2 considering that this is the 2 portion okay this portion and that portion so we just add or multiply 2 with our inertia okay so if you might be wondering why we multiplied it by one third we just go to our previous examples and you can have your answers there but you know what guys I don't stress myself about solving for this actually the inertia is equals to the summation of the inertia plus ad squared okay but then when i'm solving a transform area method and i'm solving the reinforced concrete i just multiplied one third times the base times h cube just for you to have an idea whenever it is a rectangle this is only applicable for the rectangle okay so we have one third already times the base which is six and then 9.332 for our height and then cube and since there are two of them so we multiplied it by two so that is how we get that but really the theoretical process is in our previous example so this is just a trick okay so for you to get faster when it is a rectangle and that is my way of solving rectangles I just multiplied one third times the base times the height cube automatically okay and then next to that is and plus here also also we have to add for the inertia of this portion here so that portion there is 9.32 so that distance this distance is 9.32 minus 6 that is 3.32 okay that is point point okay so meaning again we just have one third b times the height cube so that is one third of the 6 which is our base this one 
and then 3.32 which is this one the height so the, and then cube also for the steel again we just have to consider the area d squared so we have to add for 8 that is n as that is 5.06 inches squared times the distance for that 23 inches minus x that is 13.68 squared okay so that is how we solve for inertia and then our inertia there is 10,887 inches to the fourth okay so if your friends ask you about this this is just a shortcut for me okay but theoretically if you want to know the real process you just go to my previous video that formula is already simplified for the rectangle so you can just use that the answer would still be the same okay but if your teacher want you really to show the step-by-step -step solution then maybe you should watch the previous video so now we are on our next step so we have to compute the stress again formula for the stress is just my over i so direct substitution we already have the value for a moment we also already have the distance for our neutral axis and we already solved our inertia okay so that's it so we just our 110 feet caps we multiplied it by 1000 to become pounds and we multiplied it by 12 to become inches since we are using inches for our neutral axis and for inertia and then that is for so this is the result for our the stress for our concrete and then the, this is for our steel and of course we again we, we the stress diagram looks like this all right so this is our fc and that distance there is x so we that is why we use the 9.32 and the distance from the neutral axis down to our steel that is 13.68 that is why we are using that one and i hope you learned something today and i hope you really understand that locating our neutral axis is really a trial and error problem so you just have to test you assume first and then if your assumption is correct then you can continue solving okay but if it's not you then you assume again to another location for the neutral axis so for example we have the t-shape so that example that is our t so we don't know if the neutral axis is somewhere here so first we have to assume that the neutral axis and this is our x and then if our x is greater than our flange then it is correct and if it is not then we solve again considering that our neutral axis is over here and this will become our x then you already have your answer also maybe if you have another shape say you have a hollow shape that is like that maybe you can assume first that the neutral axis is somewhere here and this will be your x and then if the value of your x is less than 9 so maybe your assumption is wrong and then again you solve for the neutral axis considering here and then this will become your x again and then there you get your answer and then if you assume first on this area and x is greater than 9 that maybe your neutral axis is somewhere here so it's just you know so it depends to where you assume first okay and also for the eye shape if you have the eye shape just like that maybe you can assume first over here and then this will become your x and if your x is just less than 4 then maybe your assumption is wrong and then maybe your neutral axis really is somewhere on this portion so all of the shape whatever shape you have the concept is just the same the way you solve it is just the same and the only thing that matters is how we locate our neutral axis and purely that's really a challenge in solving an irregular shape okay and then also if you have a rectangle solving for inertia you can just use one third b, b h cube that is a simplified um, 
formula for the inertia, okay? It's a shortcut, my way of solving that one. So it's not wrong actually. But really, if your teacher wants you to, to write it completely, then you have to really to watch the previous video for that. And I hope you learned something today. Thank you so much and don't forget to subscribe.